The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. In this all-time best-selling financial classic book, the author has shared a story about two friends, Bansir, a chariot builder, and Kobi, a musician. They both were good at their trade but had no money. Sounds like anyone you know? One day, Kobi had an idea to visit their childhood friend Arkad, who was the richest man in Babylon. The two set out on a journey and eventually met with Arkad. During their time together, they asked him why he thought they had no money to show for all of the hard labor they have performed all of their lives. The lessons that Arkad provided, which he calls the seven cures to a lean purse, are wealth-building habits that anyone can follow to build a solid financial foundation. So today I am going to share with you those seven wealth-building smart ideas from the book The Richest Man in Babylon. Smart idea number 1 save at least 10% of your earnings. The greatest lesson in the book is this first lesson. Arkad was faced with a similar situation as Bansir and Kobi. He told them a story of how he once was a scribe with no money and sought out advice from a wealthy man. This man gave him the secret to wealth in exchange for his work on a clay inscription. His secret was that he found the road to wealth when he decided that a part of all he earned was his to keep and that anyone can do that by simply paying themselves first before spending any money pay yourself first means that before you spend any of your earnings put aside at least 10% for saving and investing the book makes a profound point if you start with 10% tucked away you will not even notice the difference your quality of life will have no noticeable difference you surprisingly will learn to live without it if you are not diligent enough to do this yourself have someone else set it up for you so that it's automated each month smart idea number 2 spend less than you make sounds so obvious but common sense isn't so common most young people will openly admit that they spend every bit of what they make every paycheck they often complain and wish for making more money if this is also the case for you then sorry but you will not get rich even if you make more money because you will just spend more and return down to zero in the bank account the book mentions a concept called what you earn is not yours to keep it basically means that just because you earn 10000 bucks doesn't mean it's really yours because you immediately turn and spend it on items like rent bill clothes so in reality it's theirs to keep instead when you start to spend less than you make the positive things that start to happen are number 1 you begin eliminating your debts number 2 you begin to save number 3 your stress level falls number 4 you become able to explore possibilities close to you before so keep the rule in mind spend less than you earn each move you make to maximize this gap between what you earn and what you spend will put you in a better place in your life smart idea number 3 you saved money to make more money this is probably one of the golden truths of wealth creation that is voiced in many classics imagine every penny like little soldiers every day their mission is to capture more soldiers and get those soldiers to work to capture even more soldiers most people are using money on things that rust rot or owes into a net worth of zero this include houses cars boats clothing watches jewelry or any merchandise you are making someone else rich by doing that what are the smart people doing they are taking every dollar they save and spending that on something that will make them more money usually it's on something that they are skilled at or can understand a basketball player might spend it on basketball lessons a businessman might spend it on a small business that will make him more money Warren Buffett did this ever since he was a baby. He bought soda in a store and sold it to people in the summer for multiple times the price. He eventually worked his way up to buying pinball machines and setting them up in restaurants. He split the profits 50-50 with the restaurant owners. He slowly worked up to bigger and bigger businesses until he became the richest man in the world. Smart idea number 4, avoid investments that sound too good to be true. There is a difference between having big dreams versus letting your greed influence your decisions. You can build a multi-billion dollar business with a small $10,000 investment. It's been done before. Crazier things have been accomplished. 
But that doesn't mean you buy into a promise of someone offering you a magic return of millions with a one-time investment. That's a scam. A lot of billionaires like Sam Walton and Warren Buffett were always very conservative with their investments. They would rather build slowly versus rushing into an opportunity with risky downside. Be cautious when someone promises you something with absolutely good returns that seem too good to be true. It's not always a scam, but it often is. The author has also cautioned that if you invest or use money in businesses that you are not familiar or people who are not good at a task, you will lose it. For example, let's say you don't know much about real estate. Investing money in it is like throwing it out the window because it's easy for people to mislead you. You should only take advice from people skilled in that field. If you invest with people who tell you what you want to hear but know close to nothing about the industry, you will lose the money. An example would be listening to advice from a tailor on jewels. What does this guy know about jewels? Nothing. So if you are planning to invest in jewelry, then only take advice from expert jeweler who has made a lot of money in that field. Smart idea number 5, own your home. In this book, the author has encouraged us to own the house that we live in, not just to reduce our cost of living, but also have a sense of accomplishment and purpose. For most of us, owning our own house is a dream come true. However, this may mean having to take out a mortgage from the bank. As what the author has emphasized, if the payment for the house will not make you spend more than what you earn and save, then go ahead. A balance between owning your own house and paying the mortgage without going broke should be the first consideration because having a place to name your own makes your family more comfortable your children can play and go wild that redecoration that was for Eden in your rental house you can now do it your family will be happier in their own house money lenders and banks will also easily lend you money if you own your home overall you reduce your cost of living and improve your cash flow if you own your home Smart idea number 6 have a retirement plan You can only work for so long there will be a day in which you will lose your ability to earn either due to sickness injury and if lucky due to old age so it is important to ensure your assets think about your family there will be a time when you would not be able to provide for them by working so you must have a retirement plan A specific analogy in the book talked about is how a saddle maker named Ansan deposited two pieces of silver weekly for 8 years to a money lender. The interest rate was 25% every 4 years. This comes to about 6.25% per year. After the 8 years, Ansan had a total of 1040 pieces of silver. Ansan was proud of himself and he told Arkad Arkad advised him to keep depositing two pieces of silver every week for the next 12 years after that. Ansan took Arkad's advice and kept investing. After a total of 20 years, the money lender told Ansan that his money has grown to 4000 pieces of silver. So you should also listen to Arkad. He just taught you compound interest again. I have already shared the same concept in one of my previous video on investing in index funds. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure you check the link given below in the description. Smart idea number 7, invest in your ability to earn more. Arkad started this segment by talking about a young man who came to borrow money from him. When Arkad asked the reason for borrowing, the young man said it was to pay his bills. Arkad asked why is that? He replied that he doesn't earn enough to pay his expenses. Arkad replied bluntly to him What you need is to increase your capacity to earn and refuse to borrow him money just like the bank did too. So here also you can learn two great lessons. Number 1, do not lend your money to people who cannot pay back. Instead, help them find a way to improve their earnings. Number 2, also do not borrow money foolishly. One of the best ways we can continue to increase what we earn is by investing in ourselves. It means you should spend your time or money to improve your skills, knowledge and ability to earn more money. Most people quit learning at the age of 21 when they finish school. Others are lifelong learners. Until they die at 90 years old, they keep learning and improving. This gives them a huge advantage over time. While the average worker goes home after work to watch TV, does nothing to improve himself and rots his or her brain, 
you can get ahead by improving yourself a little each day. So to conclude, these are the 7 smart ideas that we learned today from this video. If you want, you can pause the video and take a screenshot. Now if I have to summarize the whole book in 2 sentences, then that would be Save and invest 10% of what you earn with people and business that are skilled at their craft so you earn more money. Think of every penny you make as a worker that works for you. Make sure it works to earn you more money, not less. If you want, you can buy this book by following the link given below in the description. At last, a little request to you. If you have found this video useful, then please share it with your friends and family because in this way, you can also help to change someone's life. Thanks for watching. More wisdom, more solution, better life.